Hi, I'm Olivia Nikonin. I play Melissa in Founders Day, and you're watching Pop Culture with Pat. Welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. So I am super excited to be joined by today's guests. Today, I'm talking all things Founders Day with Melissa herself, Olivia Nikonin. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. So Olivia, to, to start things off, I like to ask, you know, first time guests a lot of time, just kind of what what led to you want to be an actor in the first place? Was there like a certain film, you know, certain mm -hmm. actor that you were really inspired by? How did you get started? Yeah, I, you know, I don't think that there was a specific movie or person. I think it was honestly just the people that I started meeting when I was really young. Um, I used to be a child model, which is a very silly thing to say, but it is true. And um, I just remember loving the community aspect of being able to meet so many people. And then I started to realize that I could say words in front of the camera to and make people laugh and um, connect more to myself. And it just kind of evolved from there as I got older, it just became more solidified. Uh, you play. So we're talking all things Founders Day. The film is releasing this week, which is very, you know, it's getting like its wide release, which is very exciting. Uh, you play Melissa in the film, Olivia. So what was it about this film that really excited you about, you know, the project and, and this character in particular? Yeah, I, you know, I've never done a horror film before. This is my first horror film. So I was so excited for the opportunity to get to play in this world. And um, after speaking with Eric, whom I spoke to first, um, the director and writer of Founders Day, along with his brother Carson, um, they just had such a specific idea of what the world was and knew exactly how they wanted to play into it. And they gave me like a playlist for the character and they gave me movies to watch, horror movies to watch. And I was like, oh, I get homework for this. This is so exciting. Okay. Like, you know, it just seemed like it was going to be a lot of fun. Um, and I thankfully also had my friend Amy in the movie too, who's playing uh, Mayor Gladwell. And it was just the perfect recipe for me to come join. So I was very excited. That's very exciting. And actually, that's something that I was going to ask you at, at one point, just, you know, as far as it was it your first horror film, because I was looking at your IMDb. I was like, let me just like double check and yeah. kind of like a little bit of like sci fi no, no. drama. Yeah. Little, you know, but I didn't see like anything specifically horror. So no. what like it must have been fun to just getting, you know, giving you like homework as far as like getting your playlist. Uh, oh, my God. Watch. So it sounds like you really got you were able to like immerse yourself in the character. Totally. You know, I feel like um, what is so helpful about doing a horror film is, you know, already um, the tone, you know, what people want, what the audience is going to want, you know, how you're going to want to play um, with the other people, you know, the tension you want to build. And I think that's so exciting for someone who hasn't done it before because I got to experience everything for the first time. And that's always what you hope for a project. But I think um, this time I, I really got to step into an entire new world. And that's what was so, um, so worth it for me. I was going to say, yeah, it must be always exciting as an actor because you, you do so many shows, so many movies to, to be able to do something new that you haven't done before, enter into a world that's brand new to you. Really. It's it's like the opportunity of a lifetime every single time it happens. And you always hope that it's with good people. Um, and I'm really glad that it was. So can you tell us a little bit about Melissa and kind of where she's just at when we meet her in the film? Yeah, absolutely. Melissa is definitely a lost soul when we first meet her. Um, she is a part of a family that doesn't really accept her. She has a dad who is running um, for mayor and he is more concerned with the power that he's aiming to get rather than understanding his child. And I think that puts a lot of pain and pressure on Melissa. So that's kind of where we we first meet her is is at this um, this point of tension specifically with her dad and um, trying to find her way in in that society 
So just y- you talking about the character, I can already like I haven't, you know, obviously I hadn't had a chance to see the film yet. I'll be seeing it this week, but I can really already get an idea of, you know, what this character is like. And it it sounds like, you know, not only your first time doing a horror film, but just gave you a really nice character to kind of like sink your teeth into. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, we all love a black sheep, but um, being able to play one um, and represent the queer community and, um, you know, just be able to experience um, someone who is just trying to find her place in the world is um, really fun. And you kind of already hinted at this a little bit, you know, as far as this being your first time jumping into the horror genre. So obviously I was going to say, what was your relationship with the horror genre prior to jumping into this? Did, had you like, are you, would you consider yourself a horror fan? Did you watch any horror movies prior to this or kind of where were you at coming into it? I think um, I have matured into my horror genre um, (laughs) appreciation. I think when I was younger, I was the biggest scaredy cat you could ever find. I have an older brother and um, he is so deep into the horror film world. Um, and I would be the person who would watch one scene of a horror film and then have to sleep in my mom's bed. So I, I think now as I've come to understand that horror movies are not real most of the time, I can separate, uh, which is what helping, what helped me when I filmed this movie is I'm like, oh, it, it isn't real. I get to film this and it's exposure therapy. Um, but I've I've become so much more appreciative of the horror world, not only through this movie, but just as I've gotten older, like being introduced to the to some of my brother's favorite films. And, you know, we watched Baba Duke uh, a little oh, while ago. One of amazing. my favorite of like recent life horror films. Yes. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Okay. And then there, you know, like the thriller horror, like It Follows is so good, too. I just another watched- one of my favorites. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, I watched um, a uh, happy death day with my dad recently. Like I love the films that are also so funny. Yep. Um, that, that helps bring the entire experience together. So um, that's where I'm at with horror film now. Now I, I love it, especially having filmed it. It's, it's just so fun. Well, that's great to hear. I mean, the, the thing with the horror genre is you can do so much with it. I, I feel like sometimes people, if, if you're not really a horror fan, you haven't really seen any horror films, you just kind of think of them and, one particular way but i feel like especially over i don't know like the last like decade you've seen horror films tackle so many different genres within like you know the horror movies but you know explore different themes like greed like dealing with grief and and stuff Mm -hmm. like that and then you have like you have like your slashers you have your your horror comedies Uh, there's all these little different sub genres within the genre that i think make it so much fun totally i couldn't agree more what would um what were some of the films? I'm curious. What were some of the films that you were given homework to watch to prepare for this? I feel like I might have an idea of maybe a couple of yeah. them. Well, what do, you, what do you think? I'm curious what your ideas are. I feel like you had to have watched Scream. Oh my God. Absolutely. <laughs> Scream was like, for like big letters, watch this. And I was like, twist my arm. Here that's we go. All, that's probably my, like, not even just like horror movies, but that honestly just like might be my favorite movie of all time. I've, I've lost count how many times I've I've seen the movie. Yeah, it's amazing. I had so much fun watching it. I watched it multiple times. Um, I watched it again with my friends over Halloween while we were painting pumpkins. Like it, it has become a, a part of a ritual for for some of me and my friends. So was that definitely. what was? What about some of the other like movies? Where like were they a lot of like slasher based? I'm, I'm assuming. I think yeah, a lot of slasher based. I mean, honestly, the Scream franchise was a big one. Um, you know, Halloween is definitely in there. Um, classic, of course. Yeah, just a, honestly, a lot of classic movies, like a lot of the classic horror movies, because I think what Eric and Carson do so well is pay homage to um, to the horror movies that have created such a great foundation for all of the horror movies to come. Um, so Scream and Halloween were definitely the big ones, and I think those were very important to to watch, to understand how everything unfolds and what we specifically were turning on its head. It's crazy too to like to think about because both of those franchises like Halloween has been around like obviously like longer. But I mean, even like Scream 1996 when that came out and the franchise is, is still going 
have you like given any thought to, you know, with Founder Day's, Founders Day coming out, like, you know, this could be a film 20 years down the line that, you know, maybe they're making like Founders Day 10 or, or oh people are watching it, you know, every year as, as like they do for like Scream and Halloween? If that, I, I, that would make me the happiest bell at the ball. I, I, that is what I want. You know, I think when you're making a film, what you hope is that people like it. And if people like it and enjoy it enough to get to Founders Day 10, that would blow my mind. Um, but this film is so good. So I also trust that people will want to see more. Um, and I hope that's the case. Yeah, no, fingers crossed. I mean, it's crazy. Like, I, I never thought that we were going to get uh, coming out. I think it's this next year. They have uh, Saw 11. I never because I remember seeing the first one in theaters when that came out. Like, I oh was in God. high school at the time and never in a million years. It's like I would think that we'd be on Saw 11. Yeah, but you know, we are. <laughs> we're going to get like Saw geriatric version in like 20 years. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be crazy, crazy. but. People, people love it. They, you know, they keep coming back. So it's I mean, like, it works. It makes people feel alive. It gives them something to, to experience for, you know, two hours. It's so much fun. That's yeah. what I've come to realize. It's so much fun. For you, you, Olivia, now, so now that you've worked on a horror movie, uh, mm -hmm. do you have any rules or tips to surviving a horror film yourself? Yes, <laughs> I do. Um, Never walk alone in the dark. It's probably the first one. Um, I would say uh, don't get into um, arguments with people you love uh, without resolving them. Um, That's a good one. You know, uh, what else do I have? Maybe don't try to terrorize people in a school pretending to be the killer like yeah. a, you know wearing the pretend mask because that's just asking for trouble you know what i mean yep yeah that's i say that's not probably not a good idea no and maybe just don't provoke the ominous stranger that's yeah. what i'm gonna say don't yeah. provoke just turn around and have a nice cup of tea somewhere <laughs> those are some of those are some great tips thank right. you <laughs> you're welcome so I, I'm curious for you, especially too. again, just being like your first time filming a horror movie like this. So you mentioned working on this year. You said that, oh, well, you know, I knew that this was it was all fake. But the, the thing with slashers is like, I feel like out of a lot of the genres, mm -hmm. the slashers have the best chance of like, unfortunately, like this stuff could like possibly happen. Yes, totally. So, when you were working on this, were there ever any moments filming, you know, certain scene or, uh, scenes or anything like that, that you were a little creeped out or scared like a little bit, you know, seeing like maybe the, the mask for the first time or. Absolutely. I think um, Eric and Carson did a really good job at um, making everything seem real and really creating like the set design is so wonderful. Their lighting is so wonderful. Um, the, the world that you step into does feel like it could very much happen. Um, in real life. And I think it only helped my acting, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, it, if there were moments where I was like, am I filming something or is this actually <laughs> happening? I was like, Olivia, just go with it. Yeah. Just feel the feelings, let it take you away. Um, so definitely there, I mean, I'm still a scaredy cat. There's no denying that. So <laughs> there were absolutely moments where I still got scared. Um, I just thanked it. <laughs> I feel like it like sometimes it can kind of be like, even though, you know, you're like, okay, like I'm doing something that's fake, but your body, I think sometimes just kind of like kicks into that natural survival instinct. And if you see someone coming at you with a knife or, you know, someone coming at you with this mask and whatever, yep. your body's natural instinct is almost to be like, let's get out of here or yep. fight or, you know, whatever. So okay. There were definitely moments where I was like, remember this, you cannot punch this person <laughs> in the face. <laughs> this, yeah. you are uh, an employee at the moment. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, the haunted houses where it's like, you know, don't touch, don't touch the actors, don't hit the exactly. actors. Exactly. Kind of the, the same thing for you, it sounds like. <laughs> totally, exactly <laughs> that. Were you, I'm, I'm curious for this too, because especially more so with the Scream franchise, just where I'm like such a big fan mm -hmm. of that franchise. Were you kept in the dark of the identity of who the killer was? 
And if you were, did you did you have any guesses? Like, obviously, I'm not going to ask you to like reveal who it is, but did you have any guesses to who it might be? And were you right or wrong? Eric and Carson um, were very forthright with um, how they wanted things to play out. And they were really great at giving us like all of the details that we needed to know. So the things that we didn't need to know, we didn't know, but the things we did need to know, they told us um, so that, you know, it could inform our performances. And I did have a few guesses um, and they were guesses. Okay. Yeah. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's always interesting just, you know, with these kind of films, because um, like, I feel like oftentimes like there's like fake scripts given out where, you know, it's like, oh, like this person's a killer. This person's a killer. So sometimes to keep you guys like even on your toes until, you know, the very end or until there's like maybe a scene where it's like, OK, you find out obviously like who it is. Yeah. But I, I feel like it can be different for for everybody more so like with a film like this, where you have all these different characters that could possibly be the killer versus totally. Where there's like sometimes there's like okay like we know like you know who it is or whatever exactly which is what's so fun is that um it's it's like a game of clue the yep. entire time we done it aspect um, exactly and i was spending the entire movie just like trying to figure that out <laughs> so it was very fun yeah i mean the the cool thing too with the slasher genre right now is it's like especially over the past couple of years it's really seen a resurgence so mm -hmm. you know we've had the new scream films that have come out we've seen Thanksgiving, it's a wonderful knife. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have Founders Day is coming out. So it, it's cool to see because it's like one of my favorite subgenres in horror. So mm -hmm. in your opinion, Olivia, what makes a good slasher film? And why do you think people are just so hungry for these films? You know, again, it seems like. I think one of the first things <clears throat> that makes a, a slasher film so exciting is um, having a wide array of suspects, just a big ensemble makes yeah. it so exciting. Um, I almost feel like it's a drinking game. You know, you just have your board and you're like, okay, anytime someone gets a fake out, you take a drink or like, you know, it's, uh, I, I, I just think it's, it's the most fun thing. Um, I also think what makes a good slasher are the fake outs. I think there are so many times that you're watching a film that, you know, I, with my homework and now with my love of the slasher genre, that's probably my favorite part is being like, is it going to happen now? <laughs> is it, is it this one? <laughs> oh my God. It's a turn around. He's behind you. And then, you know, of course it's just a friend grabbing a, you know, something from the back. Yeah. Um, I also think music is really helpful. I think oh, this for sure. has such a great score um, and kind of leads the witness sometimes and distracts the witness other times. Um, and I think people want to keep coming slash to slasher films because um, it gets your brain working in a fun way. And um it's such a great thing to do with friends it's such a it, it's an activity it's not just you sit back and you let the movie happen you are a part of cracking the code and um we want you to figure it out and to we want to fake you out and we want to take you on the journey um and not only entertain you but give you some sort of game to sink your teeth into and I, I hope that's what we've done here. It's a, it's always fun to to go into like one of these where it has like the whodunit aspect and be like, all right, you see like your 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 cast. It's like, all right, we got our suspects here. Like, who who do I think it is? And, and a good slasher, you know, obviously, like you said, kind of keeps you guessing, keeps you on your toes until the very end. And then you're like, like you almost didn't see that coming, but it also it also makes sense. Like once they kind of you see like everything revealed at the the very end. And you're so right about the music too, especially I feel music. I mean, music's like important. I feel like for a lot of movies, but horror mm -hmm. specifically, especially having to do with, with like the tension, you know, aspect exactly. of, and helping with that. I think it honestly might be one of the most important for like this specific genre. Totally. 
I mean, I remember when I first saw um, a screening of Founders Day, it's a completely different thing, obviously, when you're filming the movie and when you're seeing a cut of it and or a scene of it or whatever it is. But having the, the music come in, it just it makes your hair stand up on your arm and your body is locked in. It's it's a whole different it film. Signals. Exactly. It's an entirely different experience. It's it's great. Yeah, we, it's kind of like in a way, it's kind of weird to like be be filming it because I've, I've done like extra roles on like films and okay. you're filming like a certain scene and you're like man i'm really curious how this is going to play out once you actually see it you know on like the the big screen or whatever yeah. and it's yeah it's just completely you're like you look at it and you're like wow like that completely like felt like completely different like while actually filming it and how it looks uh but it's yeah it's a lot of fun yeah uh, you know you kind of talked a little bit about this already olivia but uh just this being your first experience what was just like the overall experience of working on a horror movie um did you have any kind of like expectations of what it might be like you know i don't know if you like talk to any of your fellow actors that maybe had done horror films before um did you have any like expectations and like were those like met or you know i um thankfully like i said before i knew amy um i've known her for years she plays mayor gladwell in the film and she had worked with eric and carson before so she kind of prepped me on what to expect at least in terms of working with the brothers before um entering onto the project and she she basically just told me they're the best you're gonna have so much fun um it's gonna be so collaborative um which it really was like when i when i was having you know my initial meeting with eric he wanted to know what i thought of melissa and he wanted to know um, what backstory I wanted to create for her or what I thought about this idea or what I thought about um, her relationship with this character and why do you think she makes this choice? And so it really was hands-on, like from the beginning. Um, and that's not something that I uh, experience often because a lot of times with projects, you go in, you do the job and you leave. But this yeah. time it was like, you get to create the character with us. That's because really cool. I want you. Um, and that was so enjoyable. Um, the thing I didn't expect was um, how tired I would be <laughs> doing all of the running. Um, I didn't realize how um, physically demanding, which is so silly to say now, of course, horror, horror films are physically demanding, but I, let's just say I would have done a few more planks um before before going into this you're like wait a second guys i didn't necessarily think we we're going to be doing this much this much running screaming hold on i gotta let me do my vocal warm-up first i because my voice is going to be gone tomorrow and you need it so yeah. that's that's the thing i wasn't expecting but it was um exhilarating it was so cool plus you got i'm sure like just with like the whole cast you got blood you know flying all over the place you know you guys Listen, there's blood in every crack and crevice of my soul now so <laughs> it's gonna be fun for people to see so is this something now like having done a horror film like is this something would you like would you want to come back and do more films like in the genre in the future now absolutely also the community that i've met since then has been so kind you know we went to um fright fest in the uk for this and every person I met was so generous and so kind and loved the film and wanted to talk to us about it. And it's just such a great, um, yeah, it's such a great community to now be a part of. I, I want to keep being a part of it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, like, the horror genre, like, horror fans, I honestly think some of the most, like, passionate fans. Oh, my God. So find. passionate. Amazing people. You'll I'm curious to see, like, are you looking forward to seeing, you know, later? I know this film, you know, it's coming out in January, but have you kind of thought of, you know, as you get closer to like the fall and Halloween, you might start seeing maybe the uh, the the killer in here popping up, you know, for Halloween costumes. That would uh, be if incredible. If you've ever done, have you ever done like any like conventions or anything like that? No, I've never done a convention. If you do that, I mean, just seeing because you'll definitely, especially if you go to a horror convention, I feel like you'll see, you know, the killer pop up people, you know, dressed up as him and just seeing the fan art, seeing like the edits, like once the video like uh, or once the movie like comes out. So 
Is that something I'm sure you'll probably have like a better grasp on it once it like finally hits theaters this upcoming, you know, Thursday and Friday. I, yeah, I'm, I, whatever people want, I will do. <laughs> so if they want a convention. I will go to that convention. I want to meet the people who love the film and um, see the killer running around safely. Yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would be so thrilled to see all of that. Well, Olivia, is there anything else that you want to say just as far as, you know, your overall experience working on the film that you want to say to the fans and also where can fans keep up to date with your work for any future projects? I want to say thank you first and foremost, because being um, introduced to this lovely group of horror fans has been amazing. Um, the experience was so much fun. And I just really hope that people see that when they watch the film and that they have fun when they're watching it because um, we made it for you to enjoy. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram uh, and it's at Olivia Nikonen, which is me. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Olivia. I will make sure to uh, to put your Instagram down below in the description so that way people can give you a follow, you know, keep up with, with your journey in the future. You guys, again, uh, Founders Day is hitting theaters. It's getting its wide release this upcoming week. Uh, I know some theaters like around me, it's going to be playing on Thursday night, but then you'll be able to see it on Friday. So make sure you guys go check that out in theaters. Olivia, thank you so much for your time today coming on the show, uh, talking about just, you know, working on this film, but also talking about horror movies. I had such a blast with you. Thank you so much. Me too. Hi, I'm Olivia Nikonen. I play Melissa in Founders Day, and you're watching Pop Culture with Pat.